guys, hey new subscribers, welcome to another first video of, I don't really know what this is, call it a review, call it maybe gossip, a rant, I don't know, we'll figure it out along the way, but a few of my subscribers, and by few I mean a lot, have told me that Tool is gonna dethrone Taylor Swift. And what I mean by that is that the Tool album Fear Inoculum is gonna knock out Taylor Swift's album Lover from its number one spot on the Billboard's top 200 album charts. And the rocker metal community is absolutely ecstatic about this. They're in sight that Taylor Swift will be no more number one. However, Tay Tay fans, not so much. They're actually really pissed, like genuinely pissed that somebody God knows who is gonna take their queen down. I've read some Twitter comments that who the hell is Tool? Like they, they absolutely have no idea what Tool is. I was kind of this person like a few months ago until I got introduced to Tool because of my lovely subscribers. But yeah, Tay Tay fans are taking it all on social media, especially Twitter, to promote the sales for Taylor Swift so that she could maintain her number one position. So the real question remains, who really deserves the number one spot? So I, yes, for the first time, better believe it, did my research yes stop calling me an idiot for not like researching anything before i make a video in today's video you're gonna be witnessing my research why am i boxing my camera i don't know but i'm like so pumped so pumped i did like a full 30 minute research before this damn video and i'm kind of hoping all this research is actually Correct. I made a list to actually compare how things went down. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the fact that Taylor Swift debuted her album on the 23rd of August. However, she was promoting the shit out of her album way before the 23rd by releasing her songs me with Brendan Urie, You Need to Calm Down, The Archer, and finally Lover and Three? If I'm not mistaken, of the songs have official music videos in addition to lyric videos. Not to mention the live performances she did on the Billboard Music Awards, The Voice, and even shows like the Graham Norton Show. And of course, every artist promotes their comeback on their social media, which she definitely did. As for Tool, no band in their right mind won't like promote their comeback like it's a must because this is just stupid marketing if they don't however it was not as extravagant as taylor swift's marketing so tool released their album on the 30th of august one of the few hints they gave before their official album announcement was on the 5th of may tool surprised their fans and their welcome to rockville festival show in florida with two new songs which were descending and invincible both of which are included on the album Fear Inoculum. So they kind of introduced new material to their fans without explicitly telling them that a new album is coming up and these two songs are on that album. Marketing wise, they were kind of quiet about the entire thing because it was not until July 21st did they confirm the actual release date of the album, which is August 30th. And also on the 21st of July, they debuted their new logo. But it was not until the 29th of July that they finally reveal the title of their new album. And unlike Taylor Swift, who released a few songs before finally releasing the title track Lover, Tool only released their title track, Fear Inoculum, on the 7th of August. And I actually remember that because I remember seeing Tool trending on YouTube and I was genuinely surprised because it's really not that common to see a rock metal band trending which was also the case for Slipknot when they released Unsainted and I kind of stopped Tool's Instagram and looking at the dates of their promotion and that kind of stuff they were not as explosive as Taylor Swift was so as a final verdict for this aspect of this war I think we can all agree that Tool 
won this because Taylor Swift's promotion was way more too excessive than Tool's. And now for the actual albums. Okay, so here's the thing. Taylor Swift provided many options. For example, the standard version costs around $14. However, the deluxe version costs around $30, and there are actually four versions of the deluxe version. In each version, there's a different poster. Each version includes a unique set of Taylor's journal entries, handwritten lyrics, and archive photos. Also, it includes a lyric book and lined blank journal pages, as if we can buy them ourselves. Also, Taylor Swift provides some bundles that include the CD along with stickers and the phone holder thingy and a, I think a paper bag, which costs a whopping $50. I actually did check out Taylor Swift's merch and to be fully honest, and I'm being kind of blunt here, it kind of sucks. Like what the f is a paper ring set? Oh my god, I'm gonna pay $13 dollars for an origami ring that literally gets drained down the toilet every time I use a bathroom or a freaking face sticker what the heck is a face sticker nobody and I mean nobody wants to look like a dysfunctional care bear I'm not gonna go really into the merch because I've got so much to say this video would not end all I'm gonna say is that if I get merch, you're gonna literally cry because it's gonna come with a complimentary onion, not really, but it's gonna be so beautifully epic, you're gonna weep tears of joy and onion. What? It's gonna be revolutionary. So overall, you can kind of see how much of a businesswoman Taylor Swift was during the release of her new album. As for Tool, I'm not 100% sure of this information, although it is found on their official newsletter, but as I kind of deduced, they have two versions, the standard version and the deluxe kind of version. And it literally says there's a limited edition CD version of Fear Inoculum, the collectible offering, which was conceived by and directed by Adam Jones, features a 4 HD rechargeable screen with exclusive video footage, charging cable, 2 watt speaker, a 36 page booklet, and a digital download card, all for $45. Which in retrospect, if we're comparing the deluxe versions of the two albums, like what kind of sorcery shit is this? A 4 HD rechargeable screen with speakers? Like what, what the f they surpassed K-pop groups. Like you don't get how much effort K-pop groups and idols put into their albums. They put so much shit in their albums, that's why they're kind of expensive. But to reach that level, like what? <laughs> What's happening? It does not even compare to the deluxe version of Taylor Swift's album. Not even the bundle version of Taylor Swift's album, which costs like $50. Like $45, $50. $45, you get this insane, out of this world, futuristic CD package. And then you get like a CD with a poster and a sticker and a phone holder and like a paper bag for $50. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with the tool for this one. And I promise I'm not being biased on this one. I know I'm a K-pop fan, so naturally I'm gonna like pop songs more than rock metal songs, kinda. But here's the thing, Taylor Swift does have catchy songs in my opinion, and the only reason I kinda like her as an artist is because she's obsessed with cats and so am I. But to be fully honest, her recent albums were not that great. Like I don't know, Blank Space, I probably heard it over 50 times. It's such a catchy song, I loved it. But for example, Look What You Made Me Do is just bad it's bad like i couldn't even listen to it on the radio and be really into it or even her new songs i felt they were kind of some of them not all of them kind of childish like she even has a phrase in her song saying spelling is fun and it's not like who likes spelling by the way she omitted that phrase so you could kind of see that yeah she kind of thought it's like not the best idea to include it and i don't know some of her recent songs are kind of gimmicky the new album lover to me is okay it's not amazing it's not fantastic it's not horrible 
it's okay. It's the first album for her that didn't score a million sales in the first week. But to be fair, the physical album sales for any artist is decreasing and that's just because it's a different time. People are going towards digital albums instead of physical albums. So from that aspect, I believe both Tool and Taylor Swift have suffered because of that. But finally, it all comes down to this. This is the first album that Tool releases in 13 years! 13! So you can just imagine how Tool fans were going insane just to get their hands on this new album. So that definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, played a big part why the sales for the new Tool album just skyrocketed. So as a final conclusion, I would like to say to all Tay Tay fans, get over it! <laughs> because Tool well deserves this number one spot. It's a freakishly long awaited comeback and they finally did it. And everyone is so happy about it. Taylor Swift have scored like the number one spot for each of her past, I don't know, six albums. Give somebody else a chance. It's not even giving, they earned it. So yeah, just stop being so butthurt about it. Tool has their audience and Taylor Swift has her audience. And if you really think about it, this quarrel is kind of increasing both of their sales. So overall, nobody is really upset about any of this. If you like genuinely think about it, both parties are happy, so why shouldn't you? <laughs> so yeah, just stop. Stop being so obsessive about these kind of stuff. Everyone is getting their chance on the number one spot. This was one heck of a long video and I can't feel my throat right now. So this is it for my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, make sure to hit that Patreon link. Ow, my finger. See you next time. Bye.